This is my telescope. Yeah, it's pretty big. It's designed for taking pictures of a ton of crazy stuff in space, as you've seen from all the images on my YouTube channel. But I think a lot of people don't really know how these telescopes work, how they operate, and all the cool features that it comes in with them. All the crazy features that these telescopes involve actually are designed for astrophotography use, and they're different from a lot of the other visual telescopes. So if you're starting to turn into an astrophotographer, it's good to have a good telescope with it. Today, I'm gonna to be reviewing the SV Boney SV503 80mm ED doublet refractor. Wow, that is a lot of words. And I'm going to be going over all the features that this telescope has and why it's a great contender for astrophotography purchase for your first telescope or many telescopes to come. If you're looking to buy this telescope at the end of the video, I have the link in the description. And if you click those links, it will help the channel out tremendously at no extra cost to you. But I also hope that you buy this telescope because Prime Day is coming up and it's going to be 20% off. So consider it after this video. I'm also going to be showing you some example images of some awesome targets that I took pictures of with this telescope and I'm going to be giving you some very very specific details on why this telescope is good for astrophotography, why you need a telescope like this for astrophotography, and why a budget-friendly telescope could be just as good as an expensive one. So let's dive right into this video. So before we dive into this telescope let me make a quick little disclaimer. These telescopes are not cheap. They are not cheap at all. You're gonna be spending well over $100 for a telescope like this, but I promise that these are well worth the money. They are well worth the money and you absolutely need one for astrophotography. Now, the reason I say this is because of the glass lenses that are in telescopes. A lot of the visual telescopes will have a single element lens and that's a big problem for astrophotography. When you're taking long exposure images of space, you need to make sure that you have the red, green, and blue light all focused together in the telescope. Otherwise, you're gonna run into a little bit of some really bad problems. When the blue light strays off in typical refractor telescopes you get a lot of blue stars and just a blue image overall and it doesn't look appealing to a lot of people for a great astrophotography image or any space image overall you want a sharp nice and smooth image right well sadly those telescopes can't really do that for you so if you have a visual telescope even if it's a really good visual one and it's an achromatic telescope which means that it is not a doublet refractor telescope it has one objective lens then you're gonna have to make a big purchase here. The next step from getting a single element visual observer telescope is actually upgrading to an astrophotography telescope. A lot of people call these astrographs and that's because they are telescopes designed for astrophotography. When I was looking for my first astrograph telescope, I really had a budget for a telescope and I had to realize that telescopes were not that cheap if your plan is for taking pictures of space. But luckily, Amazon had something in mind for me which was the SV Boney telescope. That is their 80 millimeter ED doublet refractor. So what's the whole deal with these doublet refractors anyway? What's the advantage towards a single versus a doublet refractor telescope? So we already know that single element telescopes can't focus the blue light all at once, right? It can only focus the red and green light pretty well, but the blue kind of strays off. Well, the solution to doing that is adding another element lens in front of that, so that way, instead of having one glass element, you have dose. Now the great thing about this is that it makes it two times as easy as focusing all the red, green, and blue light together. So that means that all three colors are gonna be perfectly together. And on top of that, some nice quality expensive glass and your pictures are gonna look phenomenal. So when I learned about all this, I looked right into the SV Boney telescope that I have, which I've had for roughly two years now. And let me tell you, the results I've gotten from it are amazing. When I first got this telescope, they were pretty well in the low and there weren't a lot of reviews on it, but it was a cheap doublet refractor telescope and I wasn't looking for the greatest pictures in the world, so I decided to give it a shot. When I bought it, it was roughly $400 on Amazon and it is roughly the same price as it is now, but now a lot of people have this telescope and I'm really glad to see this company improve. It has the typical refractor design and we're gonna jump into everything you should have included in this telescope and why this thing is just absolutely amazing. So here we have my complete rig. So this is exactly everything that I have on my setup. And what we're focusing on here is this white telescope right here. This is my main imaging telescope. Now, like I said, this is a doublet refractor design telescope, which means that it is really good at focusing all three colors of light for a refractor telescope good so our stars look nice and everything looks sharp. They also have a triplet telescope design as well. You can also check that out, link in the description. And triplet telescopes are just a little bit better than these doublet refractor telescopes, but visually, if you have a well-processed image and you're using narrowband filters, you honestly can't really notice a difference, but you're just getting that premium kind of telescope if you get a triplet design. I'm gonna take this out of the tube rings here. So I have everything off of the telescope and this is exactly what it looks like with 
no added anything. So you can see at the bottom of the tube, this is where you're going to attach your camera or your telescope or anything like that. And on the front, you can see the 80 millimeter design. You can see it tells you the focal length of this telescope as well. And so you're gonna notice right away that you have two kind of different focusers here. And one side has a little golden plate and the other side has just a black one. And this golden plate is designed for focusing this telescope ever so slightly so you get that perfect kind of focus. So you could see that the more I turn this, the less these knobs move, and the more I turn the black knobs, they move pretty quickly. And that's to make sure that you have all the precise focus that you need for this kind of telescope, because when you're focusing for astrophotography, it's really important to make sure you have some perfect focus. If you don't have perfect focus, then honestly, you're screwed. The image might be pretty much over at that point because things, you're not gonna be able to see things, so. If you extend this all the way, I'm pretty sure it goes to 90 millimeters. Yeah, you can see it goes right to 90 millimeters there. And so that goes pretty far. Honestly, you're not really gonna need to focus it that far. The basically base minimum focus distance is about 55 millimeters. And I'll explain why it's 55 millimeters in a second. So diving more into this, you can also see that we have these little tension knobs here for when you attach a camera to this telescope. That's how you're going to do it. You're gonna use these little attachment tightener screws here that basically they don't screw into the actual metal they tighten it up. So it's a lot safer than using just regular screws that just hold something in place. These are tension knobs that tighten things over time. There's also screws here on the front for any guide scope attachments, but, but I put together my telescope a little bit differently. So I'll go over what I did and I recommend doing it this way also. I think a great thing about this telescope is that it also has a rotator right here. So you could see that this bottom portion here rotates like this. And this is to make sure that you have any rotation that you want. You can get whatever kind of rotation you need. So let's say that you wanna shoot a nebula that, that has something going on in a different angle of the picture. Well, the perfect thing to do for that is just to move this little rotator. So it's gonna rotate where your camera or anything you're using to take a picture of it perfectly. Another super good thing about this telescope is that it has an extendable dew shield. You can see that I just extended the telescope right there. And this dew shield is designed for making sure that the glass doesn't get any water vapor or dew on it when things get hot or when things get really cold outside. That's where I wanna bring up my next focal point. I'll include this in the description also because these things are really important. Make sure you guys get a dew heater like this because dew heaters are really important. Trust me when I say dew heaters are amazing. They make sure that any water or frost on the glass when things get a little crazy in the backyard are completely off of the telescope. It's like a little defroster for your telescope. These things are super cheap, only $10, $15, and this one has lasted me for probably a little over a year now with no issues. So you guys should definitely purchase one of these if you don't have them. They're great for camera lenses and telescopes combined. So make sure you guys get those. That's about all for the telescope tube itself. So we're gonna take a look at the actual thing that this thing sits on. So here we have the dovetail system for this telescope. These little tube rings are where you're gonna slide into the telescope to make sure this telescope is actually mounted and secure onto your telescope setup. The way this thing works is you just turn these little knobs close like this. And once those screws are completely loose, you can open this thing up and you can slide the telescope right into here. Now you might notice that I have a couple weird things on the front here. This was an additional purchase to make sure that the guide scope on the top just was a little bit more convenient for my setup. You can order one of these too and they come with bundles. So if you guys have any questions about those, I will put the links in the description for you guys. So you can make sure that you have any kind of combination possible that you want for this. I also wanna note that this telescope includes a dovetail system right here, which is what most people use to slide slide telescopes onto their tripod mounts. It's just a standard dovetail system and it's really compatible with all types of mounts and tripods. So you won't have an issue putting this thing on any type of star tracker or mount or mount on that behalf. Now for all my DSLR users out there, this telescope is completely compatible with DSLRs, astro cameras, anything you could really imagine. But for my DSLR users specifically, you guys are gonna wanna get something special on Amazon which is something called a T-ring. This is what they look like. I purchased one also from SV Boney directly on Amazon. And this is what I use to use my Canon Rebel T7 that I used to use with this telescope. I'll include some pictures of it. The way this thing works is you really screw this thing onto the end of your DSLR camera, and then it just mounts right through the middle. And then it mounts right through the end of the telescope. When you buy this telescope, it also includes a one and a quarter inch adapter, so you can put a one and a quarter inch devices into this. So you can see that I have my inch and a quarter T-ring, which I used for a very long time. 
And you can see that this thing just screws right in here perfectly. Tighten it up and there you go. You have an imaging setup right there. This telescope also includes a lot of different things to kind of cover the telescope. So this thing, yeah, we can throw that away. It includes a focuser cover to make sure that all of those things are covered and make sure they're kept safe and sound. And you also have a lens hood or lens cover for taking your dark frames and keeping that glass dust free. So yeah, guys, I mean, SV Boney really sets you up for success here. I mean, what can you really say? Let's go over a little bit of some specs on this telescope. So this guy's focal length is 560 millimeters right out of the box. And I'll explain why I say right out of the box. The problem with refractor telescopes is that you need a field flattener for them which basically means in the corners of your images, the stars are gonna appear a little bit distorted because the glass lenses are not in a straight pattern. They are curved actually, which I thought was really interesting when I was looking over telescopes. Because they're slightly curved, it means that the stars in the corners are a little bit distorted. So that kind of poses a problem if you're trying to get some high quality images. So to compensate for this, you're gonna get something called a field flattener. And this is something that I also think is a really important accessory for a refractor telescope. This little guy is basically gonna correct everything about that. It's also called a 0.8 times reducer flattener, which means that it reduces the field of view and your focal length by 0.8. So that means if you do the math, your telescope's focal length is gonna be reduced from 560 millimeters to 448 millimeters. It's also gonna remove all of those weird distortions in the corners of your images. So that means everything is gonna be having a nice flat field, which is absolutely awesome. One last thing about these things, which makes them really cool also, is that they actually let in more light. How is that even possible? I don't know. But yeah, these things let in more light and they speed up your telescope, which means no, not vroom vroom, they go faster. But yes, they do go faster. Initially, right out of the box, this telescope Telescope has a focal ratio of f7 but when you include this guy this thing speeds up to about f5.6 that is a really perfect baseline minimum perfect awesome focal ratio that you want to have I would also say that if you're wanting to take pictures of a lot of wide field nebulae or maybe zoom in a little bit on those nebulae especially in the summertime this telescope is gonna be a perfect match for you if you're interested more in galaxies I'm not sure this telescope's gonna be able to kind of fulfill those dreams for you because of how short of a focal length it is it's really a wide field mid-range telescope so make sure you guys have a kind of decent mind on what you want to take pictures of for me i'm all about galaxies but i absolutely love nebulae too and big giant telescopes like that are just a little bit expensive and this has been a perfect telescope for me i could even still get really good galaxy pictures with this so unless you're going for those nasa resolution colors everything then this thing's going to be great all right i'm going to give you some of t-dog's recommendations here number one make sure you have a uv ir cut filter for this thing if you're going on filter yes these telescopes are great but they do have something called star bloating and if you don't have a uv ir cut filter your images are going to be pretty darn soft and they're not going to look that great luckily uv ir cut filters are super cheap i have one from sv boney i'll include that link too because they make great products so make sure you guys check them out and this thing makes sure that your unfiltered images are nice and sharp as if you know they were sharp using a narrowband filter. Narrowband imaging with this thing is absolutely amazing. This thing gives you really nice, crisp, sharp stars that I could honestly never even complain about. It gives me a lot of sharpness and that focuser really helps me too in making sure that I have a really sharp image. But tonight we're gonna test how good these stars can get with my new Optolong L Ultimate and my telescope itself. And we're just gonna have some fun tonight. So now that we know a lot about this telescope, let me end it before we jump into the nighttime and explain why a refractor telescope is the perfect beginner telescope. So I know most of you guys have refractor telescopes. I mean, when you think of the name telescope, you probably think of the typical refractor telescope design. Now, sure, reflector telescopes are absolutely great, but you have to take care of those things kind of a lot. You have to adjust the mirrors to make sure that everything's nice and sharp. And if something's a little bit off track, it doesn't make for a great image. The good thing about refractor telescopes is that they completely don't really need any maintenance except for cleaning the glass on these things. It doesn't really get that bad anyway. They're super simple and they deliver you some amazing results, but they are just a little bit more expensive than those reflector telescopes the bigger you go. Now this SV503 design has three different designs. It has a 70 millimeter aperture, an 80 millimeter aperture, and an 100 millimeter aperture. The difference between these telescopes all comes down to size and resolution. If you want this 70 millimeter design, you're gonna have a really wide field telescope, so don't expect to see a lot of detail when you're really zoomed in on things because you're not gonna see a lot with that small aperture and small focal length. If you want something in the middle, which is what I chose, then the 80 millimeter design is perfect for that. You have a nice mid 
mid-range focal length, 560 millimeters. If you really want to zoom in on things, that's a perfect focal length for me. And if you want an 80 millimeter aperture, you're going to see a lot more space in one picture too. So it's a win-win situation and I recommend the 80 millimeter design. If you're kind of feeling like a go big or go home kind of guy, then I say go for the 100 millimeter one, which I believe has focal lengths up to 900 millimeters. So that's gonna really get you close in on things so you can show off to people how crazy good your pictures look up close. Okay, so at the end of the day, do I recommend this telescope? Well, yeah, of course. My opinion though is make sure you get a lot of accessories added to this telescope because there's a lot of things that you need to take care of. For one, you need to make sure you have that field flattener if you really want to make sure to get your images to the next level. It's really a necessity at this point. You don't want to have those weird star shapes in those corners, so might as well get rid of it while you can. I'm pretty sure you can get one of those for about $100, but trust me, it's really worth it. The next thing you might want to get is the UV IR cut filter. Trust me on this one, you do not want your images to look soft. You do not want those stars to look absolutely nuts and really cover your entire image. You wanna have those stars nice and sharp. Make sure everything looks sharp and smooth as it should be. Now I've listed a lot of the advantages to this telescope, but there is something that I have noticed over the time that I've used this telescope. And honestly, it's not much of a problem, but I just wanna keep you guys informed. Yes, there is a slight bit of chromatic aberration, and that's to be expected because this is actually not an apochromatic telescope, which means that this telescope is technically an achromatic telescope, which means it will suffer from some chromatic aberration, but barely any for you to really notice. If you really like saturating your stars, then you might be able to see it, and the stars will look a little bit more blue, and they'll have a little bit of a tintish shade to them. But honestly, if you don't saturate your stars that much, and you have a lot of careful processing skills, a lot of the times you can just really get rid of that super easily, then it's not much of a big deal. You'll really notice no chromatic aberration, just something to keep in mind, but honestly, it's really not that big of a drawback back compared to all the things that this telescope has to offer. As I'm dropping this video right now, it is actually Amazon Prime Day in which you guys can go buy this telescope. It should be on sale, so check the link in the description if you guys are interested. And now I'm going to show you guys some example images that I've taken with this telescope and some of my favorites so you guys can really see what this telescope has the potential of capturing. So I hope you guys love to see that and hopefully you guys will consider buying a telescope like this one or the same exact one. So it's really up to you guys how you guys see this. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Clear skies.